Okay. For the audience that does not know you, feel free to introduce yourself. Hey guys, my name is Nick Hooks. I'm a social media influencer for a little bit over eight years. I'm from Holland, which is in Europe, and I'm just 20 years old, and I like to create content revolving around traveling the world, lifestyle stuff, etc., and fashion. And today we're going to be doing a podcast with my friend George. Thank you. Well, we're not friends just yet. I don't know you that well. Not yet. Um, not yet. But we're but we're acquainted. We're acquainted. We spoke and um so yeah no so you know i reached out to you because i saw your content while i was looking for guests and i decided i'm like hey i'm gonna reach out to this kid uh how old are you i gotta ask well i'm 20. okay yeah because you looked young you didn't you didn't seem frail uh by age you would, know, you, just, would yeah. you say i i because people say i look older huh that's interesting you look i don't know you could see it either way because you look almost like my age i'm 17 by the way oh um, you're 17. But, yeah so i'm i'm pretty uh, young but uh well good for you you have a lot of time you. thank you well that that's 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 the hope you never know though you never um, know exactly you know that's what marcus aurelius would say so <laughs> do you read often mm, well i started reading a book because i had i have a bad habit of not reading same and well i have i have a book here on my computer that i i read 10 pages of it every single day it's called 21 the 21 irrefutable or irrefutable laws of power well you know i have a book like that um by robert green i actually have it with me right now i'm not going to take it down because i don't want all my books to fall off but it's uh robert green 48 laws of power 48 yeah. laws of power yes i think uh, it, it might be similar yeah but uh yeah uh, or no the tw the 21 laws of leadership something like that power leadership yeah. kind of the same but that's that's what i've been reading for now but other than that i don't ever really read so what so yeah so now going into the content part of everything like how you started because you have a massive page on everything you have a massive mm -hmm. page on instagram comparatively at least you know with 167 000 plus followers you have 300 000 plus followers on snapchat which is usually the other way around you usually have bigger on right you know, instagram than snapchat but I digress. So why did you start with this? How did you get so big? Let's start like the beginning. What was your so the, beginning of your career? Yeah, so the beginning, beginning, and I guess we can kind of uh, go all the way back to when YouTube became a thing. This was like 10 or 11 years ago. And back in Holland, we'd have these really big YouTube stars that grew out of nowhere. And they were vlogging their daily lives, etc. And everyone in every every kid from my age i was around nine or ten at that uh, at that time uh, everyone made a youtube account etc so i also had one with a couple of my buddies and we just we would just post content etc and as time went on and we we started going to high school etc at the age of 12 we kind of lost lost each other out of sight and but that that built the foundation of what i'm doing right now and then when i was 12 i started doing snapchat and i would start i would post all of these memes viral stuff etc etc and i would i would get tens of thousands of viewers every single day and basically from there because i actually started the only thing i started uh, i used in the beginning was snapchat and i got i got just i really got big on it but before I think it's only been two or three years since you can see how much followers you have, but before that you can really see it. So I can never give an estimate. However, I, ha I had tens of thousands of views every single day, which meant that my content was doing good at some point. And then when I amassed a big amount of following on Snapchat back in the days, that was 2017, I transferred it over to my Instagram and then I well, I did really good on Instagram. Not, I mean, I was 12, 13, and I'm all my videos would do really well. All my all my posts would do really well. So, and then after that, I because I took a year off because I just didn't feel I I felt like social media was was all fake. It still is, but I just took a year off, and then I came back, and then TikTok dropped, and then I started using TikTok immediately because it was still very new. It was around January 2019. And 
I just started using it and I started posting so much on it and I I, I grew it really big. And also because I was one of the only people from my country that did it. Uh, I didn't have really, I didn't really have any big competition. So I was just being able to do what I did and grow really, really big. And that's kind of how it all started. So, yeah, so like, I mean, like, I'm also on your pages right now, like, while I'm doing this, um, you know, and, you know, I just checked out your TikTok too. Like, you have a million and a half followers almost. You have 1.4 million followers on TikTok. Like, it's crazy to me this sort of, because you, because you have a very common story where you, like, you're a little kid or you're a kid and then you, you're like making content kind of for fun. And then eventually you're like, wow, this can really work. And you just keep growing and growing out of nowhere. Yeah. Right. So what have you learned about making content like as of right now? Well, that's a good question. What I've learned about making content is content wise, it should be good quality, but it's, I can, I can kind of break that down because that's not really, really true. Cause I have a second TikTok account that has over 400,000 followers on which I just post shitty videos, but they tend to do really, really well. So I wouldn't really say, well, it's, it, it's definitely, you need to post good quality content and you need to post content that your following relates to or can understand, etc. For For me, I have an audience of mostly young girls, age 12 to 20. So I'm not, I'm not going to be posting about, uh, I'm not going to be posting about cars or, or stuff like that because they are not interested in that, right? So for me, I just post content that's relatable to my to my audience or that my audience likes to see. Other than that, make sure the quality is high. That's that's what that's just a logical thing. And th yeah, that that is about it. I would say I don't I don't really think there's that much of a secret formula to it. I just think you can really figure it out really easy. So from like all the fame that you've gotten or, you know, pseudo fame, I, I hate like the definition of fame is different for certain people. Cause some people I interview, like people be like, Oh my gosh, that guy has a lot of followers. He's really famous. And other yeah. people will see that and they'll be like, Oh, he's not really like a celebrity though. So, you know, fame, right. Do you mm -hmm. get recognized in public? And if so, how often I used to No, I used to. So back in 2019, when I first blew up really big, when TikTok was still a very, small thing compared to what it is now i would have i i had all i bro i had so many fans but i well i still have but they were coming up to me in the streets i have so many videos of that of like me walking in some mid big city in the netherlands and out of all these people coming up to me so did i have fame to some degree yeah um because i've also been to one, some of those greater meetups etc for and like big big events with thousands of people coming and i had a, i had a lot well, a lot of supporters and i i've uh, i've had people come up to me in the streets and in public even at my school even at my house but i turned it down at my house but i've had people come up to me everywhere to take photos but after right when COVID it it's kind of started that kind of stopped right now i i think the last time someone actually came up to me for a photo was what like a couple months ago really but i don't feel like people do it now do it anymore with any creator my size i i feel i feel like so how like has your personal life changed right because like you're talking about getting recognized and like it's fluctuated which is like with a lot of creators but like now when we're talking about how you like you know living day to day how has that changed well that, that's a good question so living day to day i'm i'm very how do you say that so when i first started doing this i i was in high school still i was 12 13 14 15 and i've been in the fortunate position to just graduate high school and do my own thing for now which is what i've been doing for now so how has it changed my personal life well i would say i'm not i'm not that how do you say that that vulnerable to 
changes because of fame or do you get what i'm saying i i yeah yeah i get it like you're not like super super fish you're not gonna like change on i people would to, no i would thing. say i would say actually i'm still the same i used to be a lot more introverted however as time has passed and as i've grown that 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 kind of faded away but other than that i don't really think my personal life has changed a lot because of my fame uh i i think i'm just still a, a regular guy uh however i i am in a fortunate position to do what i want to do where i want to do it any regrets no i don't have any regrets really all right so like one major issue that a lot of people have is that they don't really know where to go like when it comes to they want let's say they want to start content right Mm -hmm. where would you go like if you were going to restart everything scratch from zero you know assuming you're going to do this all again how would you go about it well that's a good question so first of all i would i would analyze what kind of content i would post right so obviously you're going to want to have a niche so that's the first thing i would be i would be thinking of so let's say if i were to restart tomorrow with zero anything and I want to grow as big uh, as big as I am right now. I'm just gonna start analyzing. Okay, what what content am I gonna post? And you're gonna, I think, to be brutally honest, you're gonna have to take some advantage of your of yourself. So let's say, let's say if you're a, a a big muscled guy, right? You're gonna want to post picture or content about you going to the gym. Maybe that'll attract some viewers, etc. But if you're, let's say, if you're a very good swimmer. I'm just I'm just I'm just naming examples. I would start posting content of you swimming and just try and make that your niche or for the big muscle muscle guy to make the whole fitness thing your niche and watch it blow up blow up over time. That's what I would do. So start analyzing what you want to post to who you would want to show it. For instance, do you do you want your audience to be a man or women etc so you're all gonna want to have to analyze that i would say and then you can start posting content based on what you want to post so now you know with all the success that you've had on youtube and all these different platforms where do you go from here like you know because for a lot of people that are just starting out their motivation is i want to get to hundreds of thousands of followers and get this and get that you have it. So what's your motivation of continuing with content? Honestly, I think it's, I feel like it's more of a discipline thing because yes, I've had, I've had a lot of periods where I didn't feel like posting and I didn't post. Um, however, I feel like it's just discipline to keep posting and it might sound stupid, but, uh, it's, it's, it's just discipline. So just, post a couple of TikToks every single week, maybe once a day, maybe twice a day. I used to post three times a day, but I didn't feel like that anymore. So I scaled it down to like once a, once a day. Um, and then just keep doing that and just keep finding new trends you can hop on on TikTok, et cetera, or, or viral sounds. And then what I would do after, because you're not going to want to grow your TikTok as your only account. So you're going to want to grow Snapchat as well, your your Instagram page maybe even your YouTube, I would just trans uh, cross post it towards all different platforms. That's what I would do. And that's what makes, um, that's what, what keeps your, your entire social media presence active. So posting on Instagram, posting on Snapchat, posting on TikTok, posting on YouTube, etc. It will all, that's, that's just what I would do. And it's not really, of course, motivation that has something to do with it. But I would say that it just takes discipline. You just gotta break on it every day, every single day. Just push it out on all different platforms every single day. That's what I would do. What's your favorite part about every day? Like, like you wake up every day and you're like you're looking forward to that thing. What's what's that thing for you? No, so that I I actually love look. I actually really look forward to working out early in the morning. That's uh, that's just something I I, I love really much. So now, like, you know, when you're talking about discipline and working out, now that leads to the follow-up question, which is, you know, what does an ideally productive day to you look like? You know, you wake up, hopefully you get out of your bed, 
and then what you know like what because i mean i assume you have to get out of your bed at some point so you get of out course. of your bed you know maybe your day starts before you get out of bed maybe you check your phone i don't know but what does the ideally productive day schedule structure look like to you so my ideally well that's a good question my ideal daily structure looks like i I always have an alarm at 6 45 and then i wake up i wait for the gym to open up which is at 7 30 in the morning so i just have i don't know i don't i just have a little bit of yogurt before i go and then i i take my bike go to the gym work out no no nonsense no no nothing be back within an hour uh get ready uh eat breakfast be ready at nine and then just work until the evening then have dinner and then hang out with my girlfriend or may meet meet up with some friends etc that's what my per ideal day looks like so you know going off of that you know what what do you do like during a day that you think is unconventional unconventional compared to other people what does unconventional mean like not normal like you know like maybe your girlfriend says like why do you do that every day like and most people don't get it but like you do if there is any i would i wouldn't really know i actually wouldn't really know i would say i drive around in my car a lot for fun but i i think anyone with a car would do that because they love they like their car that's maybe the most unconventional thing i would do other than that i'm not i i don't really do weird unconventional stuff as compared to other people I, I i think okay yeah no so now going from that to more like you know some more of your content so you do a lot of travel content like you're kind of everywhere so you know like i'm i'm on your instagram story as we speak it's like usa you know i think south carolina greece uh you know just all these different places so what's the deal like you know what is your favorite place that you've been to that's a good good question and i think it it's going to be a, a choice between two destinations which is, which are lapland and the maldives they both have their have their own charms that's how if if i say it right they both have their own thing but they're both such beautiful destinations and i i didn't think either of them were going to be so so magical it's really really cool but i'm i'm not sure that if i had to choose between the two i wouldn't know but i must say that upon landing in the maldives i always thought it's going to be some like overly fake instagram place etc with all those edited stuff and i don't fall for that but this was real life it was the the most beautiful place i've ever seen so Maldives or Lapland, I wouldn't know, but they're both very, very magical. So now talking more about like personal relationships and also like us, like literally this conversation right now, why do my podcast? I got to know. Like you probably get hundreds of thousands of messages of the day. You pick well, me. Well, why not? Right? It's always good to, to do new stuff. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. No, like because you, you, you never even see my YouTube channel, I don't think no i've not seen it okay well you will very soon okay um, well that's but, that's 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 very good thank you i appreciate you doing this by the way um, thank you. i appreciate you asking me for the podcast no problem yeah and i'm having a lot of fun right now so you know going from there so like what do you think in like five years you're going to be doing for now still content uh no that's another good question so i've always said that because my content kind of kind of revolves around my face etc so i'm i always describe my content if, if someone asks me on TikTok, like, what do i post really I, it's lifestyle it's fashion and it's thirst trap really but in five years i'll be 25 i'll have wrinkles all over my face i'm not going to be posting thirst trap con content anymore so what i will be doing in five years is hopefully i'll be running one of my or a business that has nothing really to do with social media because and i'll tell you why i feel like social media is kind of i'm not really enjoying it well i enjoy posting content but and i enjoy engaging with my audience but i don't enjoy social media because it's i feel like it's every everything is all wannabe and fake and set up etc etc so it just may 
it it makes no sense for me to watch it. I don't watch social media. If if I go on my phone, if I go on my screen time, there'll be zero minutes of TikTok. I only or five minutes, etc. I don't watch it. I don't watch nothing. It's it's not for I don't like it anymore. I like to create content for me, but I don't consume anything. So in five years, I'll be off social media. Or no, yeah, I'll be still doing it, hopefully. But more focused on something on on a business that I want to develop. I'm just not sure what yet. But hopefully that'll that'll be doing well at the time. So do you think there's ever gonna be a point in your life where you retire or are you the type of person that's gonna work till death? No, that's it. I don't think I will retire because I've tried no, I can't say I've I've tried retiring, but I've tried sitting around and doing nothing and I, I don't really like that. I I can't I just don't I, I can't understand it. And it might seem like creating content on social media is not a big deal, which I have to give it to you, it really isn't. Some people I've seen I've seen posts on on Twitter or on threads, etc., of creators saying being a social media content creator is so much more work than a nine to five. No, it it, it freaking isn't, man. Well, it, it it depends on what kind of stuff you're posting, but the way I do it, it's it's not is not as hard as a nine to five. I can guarantee you. And even though it might seem like I'm just sitting around doing nothing for my whole life, I am not. I'm not not sitting around and doing nothing. I'm actually just doing stuff every single day. So, and I can't stand the the idea of just sitting on a couch being bored. I just, I don't do that. Who's standing over there? No, that's, there's no one standing over there. Oh, that's my girlfriend. I see her. Nay. I see her too. I see your hair. Like just like, oh, out, like just a little bit. The hair. I don't care. I mean, oh. like she can stay and watch. I don't. Oh, I didn't even see. No. She she just left. What does she need? I, oh, that'd be notice, baby. Oh, she's just curious. She just doesn't know what it is. Yeah, no, 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 no it's, it's, hi. Yeah, um, well, she took off. All right. Well, I didn't mean to scare her off. I apologize. You're but, good. Um, you're good. Yeah. No. So, um, with that being said, though, like, let's say Instagram, TikTok. Let's say it all failed tomorrow. What are you going to yeah. do with yourself? What am I going to do with myself? That's a good. That's a very good question. Because most of my, most of my life right now revolves around social media, right? So what would I do? I, I guess I'll just restart everything. I'll, I guess I'll just create a whole new me. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But uh, actually, I'm actually not sure what I'm going to do then. That's a, that's a, I, I, I really wouldn't know. I don't know. Do you think that there's any habits or behaviors or thought processes or, you know, like one thought or relationship, something that you have maybe as an advantage or that you built for yourself that helps you get through every day? Do you mean relationship as in with people? It could be a relationship with a person, you know, with yourself. Like, is there anything that you have? that you know like when you're unmotivated and you don't want to try you use it as like a like that like the push you're like i can do this i want to do this i should be doing this yeah it's more of the it's more the idea of it should be done it has to be done as opposed to i don't want to do it really it just has to be done and then also i feel my girlfriend also gives me that the motivation but i also have it it just has to be done everything just has to be done there's not really um i i can i can sit around and think mm, i don't feel like i don't feel like doing this x y or z today but then the guy in my head says yeah it just it just has to be done so do it really random question but do you believe in god no well I'm no, I've, I've I must say I've never read the Bible, never read any holy book. However, I do think there's something. 
I, I, bro, it, I cannot imagine if you're gonna die and then everything you'll see or all you are, all, all you're gonna see is just a, a nothing. I don't really understand it, and I think some things are too good to be true, or I know it's, it's not, it's not too good to be true, but some things just cannot be a co coincidence, or some it just. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not uh I'm not religious, but I'm I also wouldn't say I'm an atheist. I'm not sure what it's called in the middle. Agnostic. Agnostic, that might be it. I'll just I'll have to do research. I have to I've I yeah. might have just have to read all the holy books. I would recommend the Bible. Bible's yeah, I'll, good. I'll actually I'll actually read through it. Yeah. If if I'm the person that, that pushes you to, to read the Bible, that's good. I'm glad. Um, you know, because I am personally a Christian, so right. you know. Um, but that's just for me. So, yeah. you know. With that being said, though, you know, when it comes to being an atheist, you know, not having a belief in God, you know, but you do believe in something, right? Like, does that it'll dictate any of your behaviors like differently? Like you like you don't really know what you believe. Like, so does that change how you act at all? And Not also, right. did you, also one more thing. Did you like, were you born an atheist? Like your family was a religious or, you know, were they religious and you like question it and you don't really know? No, I, when I was a kid, I, I went to a, a Catholic elementary school. So we'd always have a religion class. And I've been to church for a couple of years. And... Other than that, I, I've not, I wasn't raised religious. However, I, well, it's been, it's been a couple months, I think, since I've, I've started wondering, um, you know, my, I don't know if, if, if there, if there is something, but I just, I, I, I can't believe that if you're going to die or something, you'll just see nothing for the rest of eternity. I just, I don't understand that. I don't. I don't believe that really. So I, there must be something. That's what I. That's what I think. And I've not done any research into it. But that's all I know for now. Totally fair. All right. Moving on. This is a fun question. How many messages do you get in one day? Well, on all platform platforms combined, or on on. Well, let's start on like Instagram because like I've always wondered from from the end of somebody with 160, 100,000 plus followers, like what does your DM like list look like? And do you like look through them often? Yes, I, I look through them. Do I reply to them? Do all of them know? Do I reply to some of them or most of them? Yeah. Um, do I got a lot of DMs? I would say a couple of dozen a day, but depends on how active I am during the day. So on, on Instagram, a couple dozen. Sometimes it, it, it might just go up to a hundred something, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's that spectacular because you might've expected a, a higher number or, or not. I'm not sure on Snapchat. It, go, it gets a lot higher because on Snapchat, I'm, I'm really, really active with my, with my audience. So a couple of hundred a day easily. And on TikTok, I don't under, I don't really understand TikTok DMs. So just a, a what maybe a couple dozen a day, but I don't really understand how that works. So, for I would say maybe two, three hundred a day on everything combined. That's a fair number. So, how do you choose? How do you like sort through what's worth your time with that? Because you also have um, you also have two different emails. So, like, there's the one we're using right now, which I'm, I'm not going to say it, but um, then you also get the email that is in your Instagram. Which is Nick at tellmanagement.com. Yeah. I think that's it. So okay. that's another question, which is like, how does management emails work? Because I never, re I don't usually reach out to management emails because I'm going to get like an email back from some representative of that person usually. Yeah, I, I can understand. So the, the way it works is let's say a brand wants to work together with you, they'll just send an email through to my brand email, which is Nick at tellmanagement.com. And uh yeah uh, the management will just will just reply to that if i've not seen it yet if i've not seen it already because most most of the time i just reply to everything um 
but yeah i will yeah that, that's that's basically how it works so Abrea reaches out to the management email and the way it usually goes is management um tries to make a deal with the brand for a a, a sponsor post who's the most famous person you've ever met I've had this question asked uh, a little while ago, and I'm I'm not sure because I don't. To be really honest, I cannot name a single a single famous person. Well, let me think. That's that's a good. To be honest, I really don't know. I really don't. I don't know who all these people are on, on on famous or not. I don't really know. If I met some famous TikTokers, yeah. Would I really consider them famous? No, not really. Do they have a lot of followers? Yeah, sure. But other than that, I don't really want to call them famous. But I I wouldn't know the the most famous person I've, I've met. I'm I'm not sure. All right. I mean, that's totally fair. So now going back to an earlier mention, a thing you mentioned, you did mention that most of your content is based around like, you know, girls like basically my age or, you know, maybe a little older, maybe a little younger. And it's like thirst trap content. Now, my follow up to that is you have made a living to some extent off of being attractive. You know, I would imagine that's a pretty big part of it. Um, and so from that, you know, you have this advantage, you know, and also you keep it up by working out. I, I don't know what you eat in a day, but, um, you know, with that being said, what is that kind of like on your end? And how do I put this? Like, what advice would you give to somebody that doesn't have that type of an advantage in their content? Just try and find out what your own advantage is. That's, that's all I would say. Some, some people have... Well, how do you, how do you, how do I put this the right way? Or how do I say it's the right way? I would just really try and figure out what makes you, what your, what your good traits are. But I'm, I cannot give examples. I'm not, I'm not really sure how to, how to formulate this in a, in a sentence. But I would say, damn. I don't I don't know I don't know how to formulate it but just find out what your best traits are find out uh, what you find out what you're good at and turn it into convert it into content that's 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 what I would say So now like the next question I have is do you think that people treat you differently because of your looks yeah 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 i think so and i will name an example when i was in dubai and this is a very niche example but when i was in dubai with one of my friends and we both have ab about the same appearance we were treated and i was i was shocked by this but we were treated as gods like as actual gods and i i did not know why and then later when i was reminiscing on it i figured there's so many people in Dubai that have never ever seen a blonde guy, a blonde six feet guy. And they all wanted to take photos with us and videos, etc. And they didn't they didn't know who we were. They didn't really care. They just they just took photos or gave us attention for the way how the way we looked. And it's not the same as in Europe. I wouldn't I wouldn't really say I get treated differently on how I look. I would have to say you have to to have uh, some some degree of a likable factor to you. I'm not sure if I have that. I hope I do, but I wouldn't say I get treated differently by my uh, because of my looks, really. In 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 All Europe, right. but in Dubai, I, in Dubai, I did. That was just one one instance. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that could be racial. It probably was, you know, yeah, to some extent. But you know, with that now do people treat you at all differently because of your fame you know because of what you have because when people get money or fame or followers whatever people do tend to treat you very differently as compared i agree to 
Yeah, I agree. Yes. Uh, I am being treated very differently as opposed to. So let's say let's say you're you're me. Or let's say you're me, but without any any of the following, right? Any of the the uh, influencer stuff. So would I get treated differently? Yes, one hundred percent. People would expect I pay up front for their whole for everything because they assume social media means money. Um, but I also get very nice, for instance, free free restaurants visits, free hotel room upgrades, etc. Stuff like that. So do I get treated differently? Yes, in some way. Can I? I I usually I'll be able to find a way through to get on on, on some sort of list for some event, etc. To go backstage, some stuff like that. I get treated differently. I get how do you say that? It's easier for me to to get access to some to certain things because of my my social media presence. Well, so now that begs a very interesting question of how do you figure out who to trust and who not to trust, right? Because, you know, when you're living in a world where, you know, you have X, Y, and Z, you know, what in, we can apply anything to that, right? Figuring out when you have like status, for example, like we can say you have, um, how do you figure out who just wants to get something from you versus who wants to actually just be your friend? And, you know, have there been times when you've had people that have uh, shifted their entire way towards you because you've gotten something, you know, in, in like in those circumstances, like what have you done? I think I can sense who wants something from me and who is there to actually get to know me and or or and, and get acquainted and be friends. I can sense that really. And how how do I say that? Have I ever had someone shift on me like that? I don't really think I have because I try and keep my circle very close. I still have the same high school friends. I I don't on I I have like five friends on my hand and then my friends from high school, so it's it's a total of like 15 people and not one has shifted on me before uh have i tried have people tried shifting on me that i didn't know i'm not really sure i think i'll i'll get back to that later because there might be instances but other than that no i can i can sense if if i can i can just figure out if people want something from me or if they're actually being legit and i feel like people that want something from you in my experience don't really have how do you say that they're just very platonic do you know what i mean whereas people that i, I people that actually uh want to be friends or etc or not just want something from me they they're very deep going do you know what i do i explain it correctly they have some some depth to them well, like genuine, basically, like they're not fake people. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're genuine, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, like, do you think that there's any part of you that people would appreciate more? Like, you know, maybe people would appreciate you more for your intelligence or your your work ethic, if at all, if you even have that thought. I would say, if people would appreciate me more, for for uh, do you mean stuff that they that they don't know? i'm i am for for instance i'm well, maybe I'm... maybe so like you know is there like a part of you that like you really pride yourself on you know that other people don't really compliment you you feel like enough or like you would really appreciate them if they complimented you more on this thing i no, i wouldn't really feel appreciate i don't really care but i would say for myself i would say i'm i'm a very i'm very patient and I feel like not everyone is patient, uh, but I'm I'm very patient. I'm also very. No, I'll take that back. I used to be a people please pleaser. Mm, now I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm a people pleaser anymore. I'm trying to get out of that habit. But I would say I'm very, very, very patient. And then I would say I'm. No, I'm not intelligent. On. 
a lot of stuff but i know uh i would say i know i know a lot not a lot i know about a lot of topics i don't really know all the the depths but any any most most topics you can ask me something and i'll know a, a, a bit about it so to follow that up you know you mentioned you were a people pleaser that's a very key word people pleaser implies that like you really want to make people feel good in your presence you want them to like you um so on and so forth and you know again going back to the fact that you have millions of followers and you get hundreds of messages a day there's a lot of people that think a lot of things about you you know yeah and you can't really control that that's their will like like i might think something really bad about you and you would never know right i don't but you don't even know that that's true mm. right so how have you kind of coped with people's opinions and what got you out of that um that people please your mindset into more of this like i don't really care that much mindset so i i will say i'm not really i'm more of a people pleaser in real life or i used to be more of a people pleaser in real life not as much on social media i would be a people pleaser for people that i know in real life or people i've met in real life but on social media i just i don't really care about someone's opinions i mean if they're if if someone just says something nice uh towards me or about me then sure i'm well thank you i'm 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 honored i like that actually and when something someone says something about uh, or disliking about me, I'm like, yeah, whatever, sure, go ahead. I don't really care about about that really. Um, so I don't really have a people pleasing um, feeling towards uh, social media. And yeah, I I believe that a lot of people believe a lot about me, and a lot of people think about me or in a certain way i'm 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 not sure but yeah that's that's all up to them i don't i'm not here to change their minds really well what i do you think I, yeah i i must say uh, well i try to be i i try to be nice on social media i'm i would say i'm a nice guy on social media but other than that if someone just says something negatively about about me or or whatever i'm like yeah sure go ahead unless unless it's grounded unless it, it it's a good reason for instance if i would be if i would be how do you say it? if i would be be mad at a fan or something and i'll just i'll just say say stupid stuff towards them and then people start correcting me on it of course then 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 i think then i accept that but if people just start throwing opinions for no reason i'm like yeah sure go ahead i don't really i don't really mind so what's the um the rationale behind you know learning to not care about what people think of you like what advice would you give somebody that revolves their life around fame or prestige right if you understand like being liked or being known or being thought of in a certain way what what advice would i give to them at the end of the day no one really cares about you they all care about themselves so just i wouldn't i wouldn't try to think much of other of, of what other people think about you that's all i would say really so was there ever a comment or something you know somebody left on one or even messaged you that you were like really i don't want to say hurt maybe hurt but you were really affected by like somebody sent you something and this could be positive or negative actually you know what i'm gonna so like let's say messages that you've received that really emotionally impacted you you're like wow like i really have a difference or like wow this person really thought this of me like bad or good well i've had people dming me I've had a, a, a few instances actually. I've had people DM me about how them watching my content saved them from attempting suicide, stuff like that. And that, that really touched me. And then I'm like, why me? What do I have to offer you to not actually go and commit suicide? But I was I was very, very, very honored by that. And um 
yeah I, yeah I, I was very very honored by that so that's i've had that a few in a few cases and i wouldn't really think any negative stuff that that really hit me hard i'm then i'm like wow damn not that i can think of right now not no but i've had a couple of the a couple of people DM me saying that I have saved their life because they're watching my content and then I well I was really I I just I was I was really honored honestly as you should be uh, yeah. I mean yeah it would be honored too uh, you know and that's a that's a big deal for somebody to be telling you that they lived more because but but what's the reasoning like why what what did they say because this is multiple people i'm assuming by the way yeah. you heard it. so like was it just because you were funny or like you know they were like they had an outlet for their depression or something like that well yeah for instance so yeah i've i've received messages from them and then it might have been like um i've been in, i've been watching you for a long time and i really felt depressed and i didn't know what to do anymore and i was thinking of ending it but then i found you on your social media and i really like to watch all your content and the way you interact with your fans and the way you're always happy etc in your in your content and that really motivated me to keep going uh so i want to say thank you that's some of the some of the dms that i've gotten stuff like that so i I think I think it's because the way I try and post my content on social media, which is I'm not trying to be um what's the right word? I'm not try I'm 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 not I'm not a negative person on social media. I'm always trying to be happy on social media. And I think that's what people like to watch and like to yeah, I think that's what people like to watch and that's what people made uh that's what made them keep on going with their life and it's a really simple thing and honestly i was at that time i was questioning why why me why did i save your life because all i do is post tiktoks and just create snaps of my day and well as as far i'm, I'm still deeply honored but i was just questioning my, myself why would they choose me over any other creator i i didn't understand but i was i was very very honored do you feel like when you're making your content now do you feel that at all like that you could be preventing someone from committing suicide yeah because i don't try and make negative content i don't try and be what's the what's the right word um I can't find a word, but it has something to do with negativity. Negativity. I'm not trying to be negative on social media, so I'm not trying to push anyone into that spiral going down. So, yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I'm not trying to post any of that stuff. So, uh, how do I say that? I do. I do take that. Take that in. Um, I don't know the word. I do I have have it in my head. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Uh, a little. I mean, like uh, from what I'm getting, like you just don't want to produce negative content. You don't want to. Put yeah, that, yeah. You know, I get. I get what you're trying to say. You know. Okay. Uh, so from there, what do you think? What do you think the most meaningful moment of your career was? The most meaningful moment. Well, obviously um i've had a lot of people come up to me uh in my early years of doing TikTok, which is uh which was very it was it was an experience but that was actually realizing that all those digits on your on my screen were actual were actual people as opposed to just numbers uh so that was that was a very very uh cool moment to experience well all of those little moments all of those all of those uh individuals coming up to me over the years that's cool and then also um another great experience is 
to meet all of my acquaintances around the world that I've known through social media that I finally get to meet in real life on various events. That's that's also a really, really cool thing. So, you know, what do you think the ultimate upward like goal like the overarching umbrella if you had to say like your life is leading up to one thing or you want to do a very general thing you have a very general motive what is that motive um as in like what is the goal of your life like if you died and you got this thing you know you accomplished it what are you going to be like okay i can relinquish my life peacefully that's a good question i want um my goal is to have a family with kids because I I really really want to just have a family. That's I just like the idea of that, and I'm, I I don't really understand how some people can stand the idea of starting a family. But I I really can't wait to start a family. I'm still young now, twenty, so it's gonna take a couple of years before getting that started. Because first I want to make sure that I'm financially free. And well, that both me and my girlfriend are financially free, and that we have a good setup for the kids later. Um, so I would say once I have a family, and once I can grant them financial stability for the rest of their lives, then I would and yeah, then I would say my goal has been reached. And then obviously, uh, more side quest stuff, but that's the main goal. To create a family and to have a stable, stable, um, might even be called heritage for the rest of my, of my offspring. Yeah, like an inheritance. Yeah, inheritance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, like, because I do want to start to wrap up a little bit here, and I think we're at like on a good path to end it off. Um, what advice? And you are a young person, um, but how? What advice would you give to young people in general? I would, I would say to young people. Do not think or do not care about what anyone of you thinks because that's what hold well, that's what holds most people back. Honestly, the opinions of other people hold most people back. So I I would say don't care about what others think of you because just like yourself, because you're you're seventeen. I was seventeen three years ago, but I can imagine. Do you go to school? Yes, yeah, so I can imagine people in your in your class though though some they might find out about your podcast channel and they'll say some stupid stuff about it. I would just say just ignore them and just keep doing what you're doing because honestly you're headed on uh, you're headed on a way better path than all those other people. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I think that is a pretty good place to end off. And I think, and I, I really do appreciate that. So do you have any final words to the audience now that we're ending it off? Well, I would, I would like to say thank you for watching. Um, don't mind my English, I, but I should have, I should have said that at the start. Um, and keep following my, my friend, George, cause now we're friends and cause he's, he's, he's on a great way. Again, I, I, I like the way you ask questions. I, you, you have, you have some, it's another word I, I i can't really guess right now but you uh, you're a genuine guy and i know you're gonna you're gonna take it far so keep on going my friend i appreciate that so well, i guess we'll talk a little bit after the show and i appreciate that all right of like course. he said follow me all right all right in three two one